Why, hello everyone. It's Making Money Saturday. It's 101 p.m. on June 25th, 2022. Um, not a bad day outside. Nice day. Had a hockey practice this morning for the kid. Feeling pretty good. Having a good time. I'm actually going to like relax and probably take a nap and not even watch any of these baseball games. So I wanted to do a video not really as much about baseball, even though this is the more current look of the baseball picks for those who care about the MLB algorithm, which predicts baseball games. And I say that it is the most predictive sports algorithm ever created. That's my claim. <laughs> Just watch it beat everybody basically almost all the time. And if anybody beats it, they generally don't beat it two days in a row. So um, especially when you plug in the variables correctly. But this is not really going to be a big video about this. I'm going to talk about something else because it's making money Saturday. That's the point of this video is why, you know, why would you want to sit through me talking about baseball games? Unless you're a huge baseball fan and you really, really care about the details, as I know some of you technically are. Um, but other than that, it's kind of boring. Like just, you know, Ken, who, who do I bet? Right. I mean, Katrina wants to know who do I bet? Well, I'm like, well, Katrina bets San Francisco, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, the Yankees and the Mets because they're all above 10 percent margin. Just do that. Even though they're all favorites, put them on your round robin by threes or something. Um, you know, and then if you also also want to do all the underdogs, I'm doing all the underdogs. I got Boston. I have a wager here for this uh, in the um, in the algorithm here. And here you go. It's twenty five bucks or twenty five dollars and five cents, I guess, for the day. And it pays seven hundred and forty two dollars. Yankees, Tampa Bay, St. Louis over five runs, Washington, Boston, CIC, there's three underdogs on here. There's Colorado plus one and a half because I like that on the road. Uh, St. Louis, they changed pitchers on us. Okay, so I made this wager back when there was a different pitcher and the St. Louis's opponent changed their pitcher to Adrian Sampson. That's who's going now. And his stats, I think I had to use last year. So that game's actually a little bit messier. And when you look into the details, which I, I don't want to spend all this time doing this because I got other stuff to do. This video is about something else. I know I'm talking about baseball, but I had to use 2021 stats for Samson. It's a mess. So anyway, baseball could be a mess. It's not the best way to make money. I guess that's my point of those first few minutes. There are other things to do. So what if you need to make real money, right? Well, I'd say the most money I've made for someone directly would be giving them options advice on stocks purchasing stock options some people listen to me some people do the opposite of what i have to say well i'm so smart and good at this that you can make money if you do what i say or if you do the opposite of what i say because the market is that volatile <laughs> so let me talk about why and talk about what stock options are and for those people who are sitting around looking for a way to make i would call it not passive income but it's also not super active income. It's somewhere in the middle. It's Jane Fonda income. It's working out just enough to look good. That, that's what I would say doing stock options is. Meaning you can put whatever your budget is per month, per year, or whatever, break it out by like months or weeks. Be like, you know, I have, you know, 500, 1,000, $3,000, whatever it is for a month of trying to invest where you understand that just like in the baseball algorithm or something, your money's completely at risk, if you think about it. The same really applies in the stock, especially stock options trading market, because options are a contract. And I'm not going to get into the description of detailed description about stock options and what they are really, but I'll say that they're a contract and they have an expiration date on them. And when you have anything that expires and it's not just ownership of a stock. It's the right to purchase a stock at a certain price uh, or sell whatever at a certain price. The point is, is if you, um, if it has an expiration date on it, it could expire. So if you bought something, you know, right now that expires the end of July, it would have a month lifespan and you could lose your investment no matter what the share price ends up being in the stock. So think about it as a risk. Now, the reason why I point that out is, all right, if you know, I, I don't have thousands of dollars to risk on stock options every month. I, it's not the way I live my life um, in terms of like trying, because it is sort of gambling. But once in a while, uh, I don't mind throwing in a few hundred, you know, like I'll be like, oh, this week, I don't mind investing $250 in my favorite company, Tesla. And how, what do I mean by that? Well, 
when you start to look at what these stocks are doing and how crazy and volatile the market is, you start to see things like over 90 days, look at how far Tesla's dropped. Um, a, lo a lot of things have dropped. I mean, if you start to expand on almost all of these companies, I mean, Google, uh, Google Alphabet is actually splitting, I believe, the end of July. They've still dropped. Everybody's dropped. There's inflation wor worries. There's a lot of macro problems going on that are pulling money out of the market. But the reason why I'm focusing on the stock market and talking about doing this in this video and making money specifically is I was like, well, where, where is all the money? If you wanted to go out and get the money, right? <clears throat> if you wanted to take the money, well, who's got all the money and why? And it's kind of funny but it's the hedge fund managers and the stock market people that have all the money. They usually have all the money. Um, but we'll get, we'll get our screen back here in a second. Um, they usually have all the money, but they've become welfare, welfare queens now. Like, because over the last few years, there was a lot of bond buying and stock buying out of the government in the, in the tune of like six or seven billion, trillion dollars. It was unbelievable. So there's a lot of inflation that happened in the market. That money still sits with a lot of people who just invest in the market for a living. So it's creating extra volatile situations. And basically the most predictable thing you can think about the market is that companies are going to have days where they are, their percent changes make no absolute zero sense to the health and life of the company. Like it has become acceptable for a company to move seven, nine percent in a day on like reasonably normal news. Like it's the weirdest thing ever. It's just that so much money is sloshing around. Look at Facebook change their name. I have to call you guys meta, please. Do I have to add them? I don't want to. I want to, I want to delist them myself. I'm glad that they are dropping. This is the other thing you can have fun with. Um, you can have fun with stock options and bet against companies you hate. That's also fun. They're gone. Facebook's gone. Um, so forget about Meta. Um, point is, is uh, what what am I trying to say to do? Let, let me let me like get some more focus here. I'm saying that because the market is so volatile, companies that either you really, really like or really, really don't like, you can really go to town on what you want to have happen because things are either going to go one way or the other. And they're going to go, and they're also going to go both ways. <laughs> so, so the odds of things trading flat for the summer and stuff like that is just out the window, in my opinion. Like it's like there's so much going on between the inflation and the fear of. Uh, raising interest rates and the fact that there's still so much money in the system. So because of inflation, like inflation and, and money go together. Um, and so what that means is, for example, this is what I'm going to do um, this week, right? I mean, I talked about how I don't like Facebook, but instead of going negative, let's go positive. So look at how far Tesla's gone down in the last 90 days. Look at them over the last year. And they announced they're splitting like three to one, I think, also. Look at this. Look at them way down here at this, like, uh, what is that? A trough from a year ago? How about half a year ago? Oh my gosh, like, look so much value. Now, I, I'm all about them because I'm, you know, first of all, I have a reservation for a Cybertruck and I cannot wait until a Cybertruck's ready. And that'll be the biggest purchase of my life, will be that, like, a huge Cybertruck. Uh, and vehicle wise, for sure. I mean, that is the going to be the most expensive vehicle by far. And, and I, I expect awesome things from it, even if it looks ugly and doesn't work, I'm still going to, it's going to be an electric car, right? It's not going to burn gas. I'm like, super excited about that. Can't wait to see what happens there. Right. And, you know, that's the only thing where people envy me. I, I hear about like, they're like, you have a reservation for a Cybertruck? I'm like, yeah, I knew this a long time ago. I'm like, still, I'm not going to get it probably until 2024, but I still have one. And so I think this company has nothing but just incredible news and incredible advancements into the future for all of us, especially with Elon Musk at the helm. But Elon Musk has also seemed to be putting the right engineers. They hire the best engineers. So you can expect that they are getting smarter and they're just better because they are so incredible. I mean, they're redesigning batteries. They are just all over the place. And I love it. And everyone I know who has a Tesla preaches about it. Um, they're starting to complain about pricing more, but you know what? That's because there's so much demand. Like you can't get one. You can't get one. And you certainly can't get one like you used to. Um, the, the value is starting to really be appreciated by everyone. So 
long term, I love this company and what's going on. Love. I didn't say like, I love this company. And so, well, what's a target price? Like, what do you do? The answer is, well, you know, you never really know when that crazy great news or when that swing in the market's going to happen or when the pressure that keeps trying to put them down finally relinquishes. I think that the oil industry is trying to bring this company down, but the truth is, is everybody sees what this company is doing and they're all going electric too. So, so killing Tesla doesn't kill the problem anymore. People would rather go with electric over gas most of the time now, especially with gas continuing to go up. The more gas goes up, the more people are going to want an electric car. Um, so many reasons, right? So at some point they're going to do jumps and they're going to do these jumps of like 70, 80, even a hundred dollars in a day. And so they'll get back up to a thousand at some point, they'll get back up to at least here. Right. So 900 or a thousand. So well, what do you do? And, and what do you, how do you plan for that? What do you buy? Well, I will look this week and I'll actually do a trade this week. And I'm also not going to do it early in the week. So we're going to let all the talking about it happen as, you know, maybe even the price will go up early in the week next week and they'll become more expensive and you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically you're going to buy a long call option or I'm going to buy a long call option. You can do what I'm going to do if you'd like to. I'm going to buy a long call option and I'm going to try to get a strike price around a thousand. And what's... What that means is if Tesla goes over $1,000 a share at any point before my strike, before the option expires, and the, and the duration of the option is the other thing that you need to think about when you're buying is how long is this going to take for them to get to 1000 Well, let's assume 1000 is like even right here. How long ago was this, right? This is 100 foot. I think that was about 75 days ago, right? Yeah, right up, up here somewhere. So that is a two to two and a half month trend. And I do have a rule about spending a lot of money on options. If you want to make it less of a gamble and, and give time, buy an appropriate amount of time so that the fluctuations in your option can be appreciated or depreciated. One of the two point is, is this is almost three months. You should generally own an option for at least a quarter. You want to have at least three months of an option. If you're purchasing an option less than three months, then that is this that is straight up gambling. That is straight up betting on over-unders. If you are buying an option less than a quarter, in my opinion, okay, that's my personal opinion. So now even buying an option that's six months is still a huge gamble, but the difference between an option that is less than three months long, because you don't give yourself a full cycle of seeing the company's earnings in and out of the earnings and any other reportings that are quarterly reportings. If you don't buy an option for at least a quarter, you are straight up gambling. You can do that if you want, and I've done it before. Uh, I, I got so crazy with it that TD Ameritrade started making trades on my behalf with 10 minutes left in the day because they thought I wasn't paying attention. And then it might have an option uh, exercise on itself. So th these, this is very, very crazy stuff. It is straight up gambling. That's why I'm saying, well, if you're gonna buy purchase an option, you has to be at least three months long. So seeing that they might have a spike up to a thousand sometime in the next three months, which you wanna buy, is a long call option. I'm going to look it up on my phone right now. Um, it's a long call option of $1,000 strike price with an expiration date of about three months away, which is seven, eight, nine, sometime in September, right? Probably after earnings in September is what you'd want to have, unless earnings are sometimes, actually, earnings are probably coming up. So you're looking for an option either late August or September. Really, you can almost go two and a half months because that's what we're looking at is basically we said that the peaks and troughs, you're looking at two and a half months. And by the way, you're probably going to sell this option long, long before this. You're probably going to sell this option within you know weeks to a month rather than as long as it looks. So as I'm browsing on my phone, just to, to double check and see what this is, long call options on Tesla. There's one that expires September 16th. Perfect. That is about, yeah, September 16th, great. So the $1,000 long call option, $1,000 strike price right now is going for, it's going for $2,000, okay? It's between $1,980 and $2,050. So what I wanna buy here is 2,000 bucks. Now that's not in my you know, weekly budget for, for purchasing stocks, right? But that is 
there's a mathematical reason why that's a really good purchase because if Tesla has another couple of good days, really, really quick, if you buy that, so you get that for $2,000 Monday morning. If, if they go up to over $800 a share in the first couple of days, all of a sudden that option that, that you bought for $2,000, you'll be able to sell that for $6,000, <laughs> right? Like if stuff starts to blow up really fast, you make a lot of money quick. And you also, if Tesla goes the wrong direction and goes down, then uh, your option starts to lose value and that 2000 becomes 800, 400. It depends if they keep going down and down and down. But because it's a quarter long, because it's three, almost, almost three months long, it's like two, two months and 20 days-ish. Um, because it's that long, you have enough time. Enough time. Because if you think about, you know, um, see 60 and then 80, 80 days there. So you're looking at about an 80 day cycle. You could see a shift like that. And then if you do that times two, two of those cycles, I mean, look what happened. It went two of those cycles, it was up and then it was down and then it was kind of up again. Three of those cycles of 80 days was up, down, up, down-ish, but not as down as you are now. I mean, this is how far down you are right now, right? This is why it's such a great long call. That's why I was going to say there's another thing to do which is if you want to bet against me, you, you buy a put on Tesla and you buy a put at a price at like $600 a share or something. Now, I'll look at what that is. I don't, I'm not going to do that because I don't think Tesla, even if I don't know if Tesla might go down, I mean, they, they might, they, the stock price will go in crazy directions. That's kind of what we're talking about here. So, so that can happen. But the cost of that is a uh, $600 strike price for the September 15th expiration date is $6,000. Oh my gosh. Between 57 and 5,900. So a lot of people are betting that they are going to keep going down, probably because of overwhelming economic concerns that are bringing every stock down. So you can see that there's, that's why if you want to bet on that, but see how expensive that is? That's $6,000. And that's only $137 lower than the share price right now. So a lot of people are apparently more betting against Tesla. Now, take that for what it's worth, um, but uh, I, in the long run, I love this company. So a quarter is long enough to test that. If, if you tried something like this every quarter throughout the year for $2,000 a quarter, you'd be risking $8,000 and you give yourself you know, a 360 day window trend of times to sell because what happens is, if you start to look at all the different points you could sell or buy in this cycle of a year, it's, it's definitely, I would say one right now, or call this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, really nine, then 10. I mean, over, and there's, a, there's this whole accretion here that was straight up. So if you're buying long calls through this period of time, you are, and you buy, if you buy a long call right here and hold it for this many days, which was probably like 30 days, if you had a long call when, whenever this was, this was probably December ish of last year, maybe November, December, you had a long call right here that you spent $2,000 on and held it for, you know, a month, you made tens of thousands of dollars, like, like over 30 or four, like maybe even a hundred thousand dollars if you had one right there. Because the accretion in stock price there is like, they're up to what, like 1300 or something insane. Like what was their high? I don't know what that was. Um, but it says that their uh, 52 week high on the phone real quick is, um, what is a 52 week high? Is it even on here anymore? Does anybody even look at 52 week highs? <laughs> oh, there it is. The 52 week high was 1243.49. So that's probably what this is right here. Is is like 12, a little over 1200. Let's call it that. So um that is, you know, not quite double what they are right now, but that's less than a year ago. So when the money gets pumped into them again and people see and also everyone wants to when the cyber truck comes out or whatever, you're gonna want to own even longer options than a quarter from now, but yearly options you can absolutely retire on a run like that. You can retire on a month like this. If you have 
Because if you have, you know, say you have $25,000 invested in, in five different Tesla options that range from a quarter to a few, to a year or more, and you have a month like this, your $25,000 turns into well over a hundred uh, and well over, actually probably $500,000 is what $25,000 comes out to. If you hold them and buy right here and catch a wave like that. So that's going to happen at some point again because of how volatile the market is. It's pretty predictable. They might go way down before that. So you don't want to have all your money invested for a short period of time because you might lose it. But if you have your money invested over a longer period of time, you're probably going to make money. That's my opinion on things. So it's making money Saturday. It's a little talk about stock options. I will start to uh, track some reasonable price ones that are more gambling, I would say, because I'm not going to be putting, I mean, 2000 is an acceptable amount to put in for a quarter, actually. I feel like that is actually kind of a reasonable investment that I, if I lost that, one, you'd have a run for that for, for months before you would really pack it up and be like, oh, my life is over. I lost my $2,000. You would have a run for a couple months. So it would be watching something and you'll, you'll I mean, almost like 99.9% .9 chance you'll have a spot at some point during the first month or so to sell that thing at a profit over $2,000. Like it's so, so possible the way they fluctuate. They would have to go straight down and stay down for at least the first half of that quarter. So the first month and a half for you to lose so much value of that two, two grand. And even then you still might be able to come back because according to their chart, there's no reason they can't get back up to an area like here, which will make you money. So that's my advice. It's a one company advice. It's my favorite company. If you don't want to listen to me about the technicals, go check out Stephen Mark Ryan's channel, Solving the Money Problem, right? It's Making Money Saturday. Well, he's solving the money problem. He's right about a lot. And he, I believe, became a millionaire simply investing in nothing but Tesla. And he's, he's very good at explaining financially why the stock price will follow and, and, and as well as communicating the actual why, why, like, why are we all transitioning? Why is this company awesome? Why? I mean, why? <laughs> There's a lot to go over there. And why do they keep getting better? And, and it really comes down to the simple logic of you hire the best people and you end up with the best company and you keep the best people. I like hearing stories saying Tesla's going to purge 15%, 10% of their workforce. Yeah. Trim the fat. Let's trim the fat and keep the best and keep getting better. Right. What if you had the same baseball players playing on your team for, for 15, 20 years because they didn't want to retire yet? Everybody's Albert Pujols. He's still hitting the ball. <laughs> but point is, is it, it wouldn't work out well for your team. Um, so you got to mix it up. You want some experience, but you, you want people to keep working. So we'll talk and we'll follow this a little bit more uh, during the week because it's, it's more interesting to talk about. And of course, we'll still have this going on in the background because it will be nice to not focus on this so much, but just hit some stuff every once in a while and be like, oh yeah, remember I told you guys we're going to be up? I mean, we're down right now. We're down like a hundred bucks right now. Um, uh, I, keep, I keep getting close, but not, you know, we had a couple payouts a couple days I missed yesterday. Um, uh, and today I, I got it up sort of late, but what, whatever. So we need to see what happens today. And um, that's it. All right, guys. So good luck, everybody. May your picks be winning, may your trades be winning. And we'll keep talking about a lot of different topics, including... Uh, of course, the top stock information. This is a public file too, by the way. You can check this thing out. I, it's funny because I see people going into this thing when I hadn't updated it in so long. I need to update all these prices. Um, like last reviewed on everything is awful. Like look, my last reviewed on this stuff is October of 2021. I haven't touched anything. And I had crazy uh, target prices. Look at how much everything has dropped. There's so much for me to go over. Um, so much for me to go over in here. And so I'll get to work on this a little bit because it is more interesting and there's more money to be made here in a different way um, in this semi-active, semi-passive way, the Jane Fonda way of investing as I will call it. All right, <laughs> so good luck everybody. Now your picks be winning.